The Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan says no fresh COVID case reported in the 80 districts since the last seven days. The doubling rate of infection is easing off in the country. The minister to review the status of COVID surveillance in Delhi through video conferencing today. People who are clinically diagnosed to have very mild COVID-19 symptoms or in the pre-symptomatic phase now to have the option for home isolation, the health ministry issues guidelines. ICMR advises states to stop using the rapid test kits from China, our states to return all the kits, assures the countrymen that there is no shortage of the testing kits. The number of active cases of coronavirus across the country is 21,632. 934 people have died due to COVID-19. 6,868 patients have recovered after treatment so far. The global tally of COVID-19 cases increased to more than 30,41,000 and the death toll crosses 2,11,000. The US leads to the toll with over 56,000 deaths. The World Health Organization warns that the COVID pandemic is far from over, raises concern about the vaccine shortages and the disruption of the normal health services the world over. Hello and good afternoon. You're watching the Udarshan News with me, Nancy Kohli, a top story. The Union Health Minister, Dr. Harshwardhan, addressed a video conference uh, today and the minister briefed about the current situation of COVID-19 in the country. He said that no fresh case has been reported in the 80 districts since the last seven days. 17 districts have not reported a case for the last 28 days, he also added. 80 districts... <laughs> In, in India, I have not reported a fresh case uh, since the last seven days. 47 districts have not reported a case uh, for the last uh, 14 days. 39 districts have not reported a case for the last 21 days. And uh, 17 districts have not reported a case for the last uh, 28 days. While interacting with the Autonomous Institute of Department of Biotechnology through video conferencing, the minister mentioned about a decline in the doubling rate. The minister said that for the last 14 days, our doubling rate is 8.7, while for the last seven days, it is 10.2 days. In the last three days, it is 10.9 days approximately. So there is a doubling rate, which is a very is a significant and uh, powerful indicator of how the things are happening. So pre-lockdown, you know, our uh, doubling rate of cases was around three days. But when I talk to you today, for the last uh, 14 days, our doubling rate had been 8.7. And for the last seven days, it had been 10.2. And today, for the last uh, three days, when we calculate, it is uh, roughly 10.9. I think that's a very, very significant progress. The health minister will also be reviewing the current status of COVID uh, surveillance in Delhi with the lieutenant governor, the Delhi health minister, MCD commissioner, the district magistrates and the DCPs of all the districts of Delhi and the central or state and district surveillance officers and the heads of government hospitals in the national capital through video conferencing. And moving on now, well, people who are clinically diagnosed to, to be having very mild COVID-19 symptoms or are in the pre-symptomatic phase now also have an option for home isolation. According to the fresh guidelines issued by the health ministry, uh, those who show COVID-19 symptoms but are not severely affected by it now have the option for home isolation. The ministry has further said that the new guidelines are in addition to the existing ones. So as per the eligibility for home isolation, the person should be clinically assigned as a very mild case or pre-symptomatic case by the treating medical officer. The patient also must have requisite facility for self-isolation at their residence. 
Also, a caregiver must be available 24-7 and Arogya Setu application must be downloaded and must remain active via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Meanwhile, the patients uh, must also feel undertaking before self-isolation as provided by the government. The government has also advised patients to seek medical attention of serious symptoms if the serious symptoms do develop. A patient uh, is to end the self-isolation only when the health officer clinically so certifies them free from infection. And the health ministry has also listed the symptoms that determine if a, a patient does need immediate medical attention. Moreover, they are to end the home isolation only if and when uh, clinically advised by the treating medical officer. Details are in fact also available on the health ministry's website. And for your uh, information that uh, the, uh, the URL is www.mohfw, that's the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, .gov .in. And as per the latest data released by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, 21,632 active cases of COVID-19 have been reported across the country. 934 people have lost their lives, while 6,868 people have been cured and discharged from the hospital. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh interacted with the heads of the Defence Public Sector Undertakings and the Ordnance Factory Board via video conferencing. The Raksha Mantri reviewed their recent business performance and their contribution in India's fight against COVID-19. Human Resources Development Minister Ramesh Pokhrian Nishank will be interacting with the Education Ministers and the Education Secretaries of all the states through video conferencing today at around 2 in the afternoon to discuss issues like handling COVID-19, the midday meal, Samagra Shiksha and all the other aspects. The move is to ensure that students continue their studies in these times. Remember earlier, the HRD minister had on Monday interacted with the parents across the country through a webinar in view of the circumstances arising out of COVID-19. And during that interaction, the HRD minister had said that the NCERT has sent books to almost all the states and very soon these books will be available to the students. On the question of conducting the remaining examinations of the CBSE 10th and 12th standard, the Union Minister had said that the examinations in 29 core subjects will be conducted at the first possible opportunity. The Minister had also responded that education of the students is continuing through the various online platforms of the Ministry and also informed that more than 80,000 courses are available only on the Ministry's Diksha platform. He also informed that e-learning in the country has witnessed an appreciable upsurge during the past few weeks. Moving on now, the Niti Ayog building in the national capital has been sealed as per the health ministry protocols. The step was taken after an employee working at the Niti Bhavan has been detected positive with COVID-19. Niti Ayog is following all the due protocols necessary as per the Ministry of Health guidelines. The entire building is being sanitized while the contacts of the single COVID positive person have been asked to go on a self-quarantine. Now, India has brushed aside the recent comments made by some social media handles regarding India and the Arab relations. The External Affairs Ministry has noted certain references to India in the non-official social media handles in Kuwait. The government of Kuwait has assured India that they are deeply committed to friendly relations with India and they also do not support any interference in the internal affairs of India. India and Kuwait have been cooperating on the coronavirus pandemic. It is therefore important that friendly and cooperative nature of our relations is accurately recognized and the misuse of the social media is not given any credence. Recently, some social media handles tried to insinuate a rift on the religious grounds between India and its Arab friends. One of the Twitter handles even tried to personate an Omani princess. However, that was deleted soon. Many other social media handles were also found to be fake and involved in the anti-India propaganda. In a unique show of solidarity, the JNK police, led by DGP JNK Dilbak Singh, expressed solidarity with the fellow policemen and doctors, the paramedic staff, 
the municipal workers and other COVID-19 workers, the Corona Warriors, in a solidarity sammelan held at the police headquarters lawns while observing all the social distancing norms and other protocols. Jammu-based police officers of all the ranks participated in the solidarity sammelan. They were holding placards on different themes, including one for SI Harjit Singh of the Punjab Police. Harjit Singh's hand was chopped off in a horrific incident uh, when he was assaulted while performing his duty. Similar sammelans were held by all the district police and the armed police units at the respective locations across Jammu. इस इस माहौल में जहां कोरोना वायरस जो है उससे बहुत ज्यादा लोग संक्रमित हुए हैं और जो सिलसिला अभी भी जारी है बहुत सारे इंसिडेंट सामने आए जहां पर डॉक्टर्स के ऊपर पुलिस कर्मियों के ऊपर सुरक्षा बलों के ऊपर सेवक वर्कर के ऊपर अटैक किए गए वायलेंस की गई उनके ऊपर अब ये कहना चाहते हैं कि हम अपने सब उन लोगों के साथ उन कुलीग्स के साथ सॉलिडरिटी में खड़े हैं और हम निंदा करते हैं मुजम्मत करते हैं सख्त लफ्जों में ऐसे टैक्स की और अपील करते हैं कि आइंदा इस तरह के इंसिडेंट्स नहीं होने चाहिए आज पंजाब पुलिस के जो पुलिसकर्मी एस आई हरजीत सिंह है जिनके ऊपर हमला हुआ था उनके साथ पर्टिकुलरली सॉलिडेरिटी दिखाने के लिए हमने अपना बैच चेंज किया है और हरजीत सिंह का बैच लगाया है और मैं कहना चाहूँगी कि आज पुलिस हम सभी सभी एक है पुलिस के साथ साथ हेल्थ और बाकी जो डिपार्टमेंट है जो फ्रंट लाइन में काम कर रहे हैं हम सब लोग एक है कोरोना के इस जंग में After three deaths of Mumbai policemen uh, of uh, COVID-19, all the personnel above 55 years of age have been asked to stay at home. All the personnel above 52 years of age with previous medical conditions like diabetes, hypertension have also been asked to stay at home. The HCQ tablets for 12,000 personnel are being provided under medical supervision. Also multivitamins and protein supplements are also being provided for 20,000 personnel to strengthen their immunity. Special hospitals are being designated for per police personnel. Also, all the COVID hospitals in Mumbai have dedicated beds for Mumbai police personnel. The special COVID helpline number has also been set up for police personnel and their families at the control room to resolve any doubts or issues that they might have related to COVID-19. The medical professionals have also been associated with it. All the efforts are being made to provide police force with the best facilities to enable them to stay strong and secure themselves and their families while serving the city with dedication. The government has also granted 50 lakh exgratia amount to all the personnel who lost their lives fighting COVID-19. The government has issued a list of do's to prevent uh, people from the stigma around the COVID-19 pandemic and stand together in this time of crisis. The instructions include appreciating and being supportive to people providing essential services, sharing only the authentic information from the government sources, cross-checking information on COVID-19 and sharing positive stories about people who have recovered. Now, in a latest disclosure by the government, a fake news has been busted over the deductions in allowances of employees working under the central government. The media report speculating over deduction has been termed as misleading. The Press Information Bureau has clarified that there is no proposal for any deduction in the allowances of the central government employees. There is also a myth circulating on the social media that hand dryers are effective in killing uh, the COVID-19 virus. Please note that hand dryers cannot kill the coronavirus. The PIB's fact check team investigated it and revealed its reality. It says the hand dryers are not effective in killing the coronavirus. To protect yourself against COVID-19, you should wash your hands frequently with soap and water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Once you clean your hands, you can use a hand dryer or the paper towels to dry your hands. And now in some positive news for the tea farmers of Kangra district, the tea plantations and the small-scale tea growers in the country will not be affected amid the lockdown after being exempted by the government. Also, the production of Kangra tea will not be affected. 
It was believed that the ban on accessing tea gardens in the first round of lockdown could affect the tea production. However, the exemptions has given the opportunity to workers to prompt the production successfully. However, Palampur's Tea Board of India Deputy Director Dr. Anupam Das has said that the tea planters are facing problems as operations are running below 50% capacity due to labor shortage. He added that weather this year has been favorable for production of tea. जो लास्ट ईयर में हम लोग 9.2 लाख फॉर्मल सेक्टर से प्रोडक्शन लाया इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर को छोड़ के जो लोग हैंडमेड टी बुटिक टी बनाता है जैसे गांव में लोग चाय बनाता है तो वो छोड़ के जो 9.2 लाख जो हम लोग रिकॉर्डेड प्रोडक्शन हिसाब से जो लास्ट ईयर का इंडस्ट्री का ओवरऑल प्रोडक्शन देखा इस साल भी हम लोग उम्मीद कर सकता है जैसे मौसम का जो सपोर्ट मिल रहा है उसमें वो बरकरार रहने का ही ज्यादातर चांस है in Chhattisgarh's Balrampur, more than 31,000 construction laborers have set an example for entire nation to wear masks and hand gloves in work field amid the lockdown over COVID-19. These laborers have got livelihood in village itself under Manrega scheme. प्रशासन की योजना है कि वंधन केंद्र में यह लोगों ने पहुंचाए और जो शासन का समर्थन मूल्य है उस मूल्य पर खरीदा जाए। आज की स्थिति में इस गांव के आसपास जो भी लगभग पर संग्रहण हो रहा है इस ग्राम स्तरीय वंधन जो संग्रहण केंद्र है यहां काफी लगभग पर जाया है और उनका जो समर्थन मूल्य उसके आधार उसका तत्काल भुगतान किया जा रहा है इससे ग्रामीणों को भी तत्काल आर्थिक सहायता उनको मिल जा रही है जो भी उनकी लॉकडाउन की स्थिति में तत्काल जो भी पैसे की जरूरत है उसका उपयोग कर पा रहे हैं पीपल रिकवर्ड फ्रॉम कोविड-19 इन इंदौर हैव अप्लॉडेड द हॉस्पिटल स्टाफ they have expressed gratitude towards the medics and the government for care and hospitality they provided during the treatment. These people have defeated the corona pandemic and have also been discharged from the hospital. My name is Manas. We are going to go to Sinwa. We have a good treatment here and we are going to go home and we are going to go home. मैं लोगों से यही अपील करता हूँ कि अपने अपने घर में रहे और स्वस्थ रहे और खांसी बुखार या फिर कुछ भी बीमार लगे तो अपना इलाज करवाएं यहाँ का स्टाफ अच्छा है सब टाइम से देते हैं गोली दवा भी ना डॉक्टर भी अच्छे से जांच करते हैं आज मैं खुश होकर घर जा रही हूँ अच्छे से as the nation is under lockdown due to the coronavirus pandemic some electronic shops have reopened in some areas of delhi Amid the lockdown, the administration has given concessions to open electric and electronic shops. People coming to buy goods are following social distancing. The foreign ministers of the BRICS nations will hold meeting via video conferencing at 4 late afternoon today. The focus of the meeting will be on the impact of the crisis caused by the outbreak of the COVID-19 on international relations. The ministers will exchange views on possible joint measures by five on countering COVID-19 and overcoming the financial, trade, economic and social consequences of the pandemic. Now the World Health Organization has warned that the coronavirus pandemic is far from over. Speaking at the regular briefing in Geneva on Monday, the WHO Director General has said that he was deeply concerned about the impact of the disruption of the normal health services, especially on children. Noting that several European nations are preparing to ease coronavirus-related restrictions, the head of WHO has urged countries to continue to find, isolate, test and treat all the cases. He added that the WHO was concerned about increasing trends in Africa, Eastern Europe, Latin America and some Asian countries. The WHO Director General has also expressed concerns that some of the efforts to stop the spread of COVID-19 such as closing borders has resulted in the shortages of vaccines against other diseases in 21 countries. He's also urged worldwide solidarity to stop the spread of COVID-19. He said, if people are not united, the virus will exploit divisions between individuals and continue to create havoc, leading to more loss of life. He said, every life is precious. The WHO's top emergencies expert, Mike Ryan, said that the U.S. seemed to have a science-based federal plan for fighting the coronavirus epidemic. 
as lockdowns in Europe is with declining numbers of new cases, we continue to urge countries to find, isolate, test, and treat all cases and trace every contact to ensure these declining trends continue. But the pandemic is far from over. And uh, talking about the number of cases across uh, the world, well, 30,43,122 uh, confirmed cases have been reported across the globe, while 2,11,221 people have lost their lives due to COVID-19 globally. And the U.S. now has an overall death toll at 56,245 with 9,88,451 confirmed cases. The total number of people recovered in the U.S. now stands at 1,11,197. However, certain restrictions have been lifted in several states, but shopping malls still remain closed. Washington will reopen some outdoor recreation on the 5th of May, while Texas will ease certain restrictions and restart business soon in phases. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump said that he would consider easing the sweeping travel restrictions he imposed on European countries depending on how the continent responds to COVID-19. Now, U.S. President Donald Trump, while addressing a press briefing, said that he's confident that the coronavirus testing is not going to be a problem as the U.S. economy reopens. Our Washington correspondent, Jagruti Dave, has more on this. There was a press briefing of the coronavirus task force and the president did take questions from reporters despite tweeting over the weekend that these briefings are not worth the time and effort. Um, at the latest uh, briefing, the president uh, said that he had had a fantastic call with state governors uh, where he talked to them about his administration's plans to uh, increase nationwide coronavirus testing. He said that uh, the admin his, his administration was continuing to rapidly expand uh, testing. He said that he was confident that there, go there were going to be enough tests to begin the reopening of the United States economy. And he said that testing was not going to be a problem, describing it as one of the assets that they have. Now, all of this comes as state governors, several state governors, have been asking the federal government to ramp up testing and increase access to testing supplies, which they say uh, are essential in order for them to reopen their economies. And at this briefing, the president was also asked about another issue, that of the state of Kim Jong-un, the North Korean leader's health. There have been reports uh, suggesting that he is unwell. Now, the president replied saying that he does have a very good idea idea, but that he can't talk about it right now. And Italy has announced to ease Europe's longest running lockdown to contain uh, the coronavirus pandemic. The Prime Minister has said that some restrictions will be eased from the 4th of May, including the reopening of parks, factories and the building sites. Our correspondent from Europe uh, has more on this. Listen in. Italy went into full lockdown on the 9th of March, one of the strictest in Europe, in the country uh, that was at the beginning the epicentre of the pandemic. There are now plans about how it intends to emerge. The Prime Minister, Giuseppe Conte, said on Sunday evening that from the 4th of May, people will be allowed to visit their relatives in small numbers. Parks, factories and building sites will reopen, but schools will be staying closed until September. Bars, restaurants and hairdressers are allowed to reopen from the 1st of June. Over the weekend in Spain, children were allowed to leave their homes to play for the first time in six weeks as the government eased restrictions that have kept anyone under the age of 14 uh, from venturing out in public. Its health ministry said earlier that 288 people died in the 24 hours leading up to Sunday, which is the lowest number since the 20th of March. There will be a slow easing of the lockdown from mid-May, but from the 2nd of May, people will be allowed to take exercise outside. In Germany, dozens were arrested in Berlin on Saturday, out protesting against the lockdown. Around a 1,000 people turned out, calling for what they called an end to the state of emergency. But there was a tough response from German police. Lucy Hoff, Dordachen News, Brussels. 
And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the news. Thanks for being with us.